Hey, everybody. Our second installment of the Are You Game podcast. And no, no guests yet. We have them lined up. Stay tuned in the near future, actually, because we'll be going over the NHL trade deadline like you really haven't before. We'll be talking to an insider who will give us the latest and greatest stories, tidbits, and mechanics on how the trade deadline in the NHL goes down and, and the human element of it, which we never really talk about. But this podcast is of the CFL variety, and I didn't think I'd be getting into CFL stuff so soon with Are You Game? But sure enough, I was uh, called into duty. So a uh, tremendous website called 3 downnationcom The editor-in-chief is Justin Dunk, who's been a guest on my radio show in the past, and I've also written for 3 Down Nation in the past. So we're collaborating, we're working together on how I'll be a contributor to Three Down Nation covering the Montreal Alouettes this season. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I thought that in light of my first article that went down the other day, uh, I thought I would cover just a few additional points about uh, the new ownership of the Montreal Alouettes and maybe a little bit of what ails the CFL, particularly in this market. And, and maybe it applies as well in Toronto to some extent. So starting with the ownership situation, yes, uh, the CFL was able to land Pierre Carl Pelado as the new owner of the Montreal Alouettes. And that's a significant move because of the deep pockets. Uh, clearly, they were looking for somebody who was in it for the long term and who had deep personal pockets. Now, not to say the previous ownership didn't, but uh, Mr. Pelado, according to Forbes, is worth $1.9 billion dollars. And so that certainly helps here in this market. And so they bring him in. And my initial concerns when I heard the reports were, uh, you know, what was what were his motives? And, and knowing his political pasts, right? The former leader of the Parti Québécois, the separatist party here in Quebec. And he had been outspoken on, you know, obviously uh, Quebec pride and, and, and Francophone culture and so forth, which is which is great. And I think everybody who lives in Quebec should speak French. There's no question about that. I want to state that emphatically. It's not something that I'm advocating against. However, when you hear the name Pierre Carl Pelado as an Anglophone sports fan here in Montreal, in the province of Quebec, initially your reaction might make you a little uneasy. What are the plans for the Montreal Alouettes? In other words, Will they be scaling back their bilingual nature? Will it be almost, you know, unilingual or 70-30 in terms of uh, how the in-game festivities uh, are conducted, how their multimedia platforms put uh, news out there in English and French? So that was my initial concern. And, and you know, I got a lot of clap back on Twitter uh, from folks saying, well, hold on a second. He wouldn't, he wouldn't spite his English fans. He doesn't want to do that. Well, I think the calculation sometimes is that if you ratchet up the national pride, that you're going to get maybe the ardent, hardcore Pekists or, or folks who might be um, very pro-Quebec that may not necessarily have been interested in the Alouettes in the past to all of a sudden get interested. And so it's pandering to a new, uh, uh, you know, fan base from the regions, from different kind of remote areas of Quebec and making it truly a provincial team. And so I think maybe that's where I was coming from when I had some angst or some uneasy, um, you know, thoughts about when his name was announced as the potential new owner and, and now current owner. But, you know, his press conference obviously was a masterclass. He, he, he began it in French and uh, moved on to English and answered questions very thoughtfully and related to the reporters in the room and showed that he was up on the, what people were saying about him and about the team. And that's obviously very relevant. It, it's certainly something that Gary Stern loved to do and interact uh, with folks on Twitter. Now, Mr. Pelado is, of course, on Twitter. He's got 100,000 followers there. And he's somebody who's very influential in the Quebec landscape in a variety of ways. He helped to make sure that there was a, an arena built in Quebec City, should the NHL ever want to expand to Quebec City. He's had his hand in various uh, sports entities in the Quebec Major Junior League and elsewhere. So he brings a huge 
acumen, not just from a business perspective, but also from a sports perspective. And that's what the CFL was really looking for. Now, a lot of people are wondering, you know, how is a guy whose uh, media empire centers around, or at least the sports side centers around TVS Spore when the league is locked up until 2025 with TSN and RDS, a.k.a. Bell Media. Well, that's where we kind of get into why I think he wanted to buy the Montreal Alouettes. He talked about passion and pride, and I think there's two reasons here. So, yes, that's part of it. Legacy. Uh, Mr. Pelodeau wants to come in. He wants to be the guy who saves the Alouettes, puts them on the right track, makes them from a, a money loser, which we don't know officially they are, but everybody assumes they are. We don't have access to their books, but really it's common knowledge. No practice facility, no stadium, uh, ticket sales, well under 20000 for most games. So that's where we're coming from. But legacy in the sense of I'm going to take this team and I'm going to make them viable financially. I'm going to make the entire province believe in them. Every region in the province is going to feel like they have a, a piece of the Montreal Alouettes. And that's what I'm going to do for this franchise. I think that the other aspect that Mr. Pelado wants to do is he wants to be a media disruptor, right? He wants to come in and say, okay, it's fine. RDS, you got it. No problem. You got the rights for a, few, a couple of years. We can't do anything about it. But I could put a Videotron patch on the uniforms, couldn't I? Oh, boy. You're going to have to show that on LDS point, point CA and LDS television all year long, all season long. So, you know, there's definitely things that he can do to be a disruptor. And, you know, it's already 2023, 2025 is not that long away. And the CFL's got to be licking their chops thinking, okay, well, maybe we have to separate the French and English rights out here. Maybe Bell Media is not going to control the Montreal Alouettes in the summer. Uh, so that, that'll be interesting because the Blue Jays are also on TVS Spore. So LDS in the summer obviously has Major League Baseball games. They pick up most of that programming from ESPN. Um, so summer programming, you know, they do build some things around the Alouettes and they, they do a great job covering the Montreal Alouettes. So I think from a disruptive point of view, uh, Mr. Pelado said in the press conference, hey, I'm looking to also um, uh, use the Alouettes to help my business, my business, businesses with Quebec or and vice versa. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. But one thing's for certain, the CFL definitely thinks they're going to get more money out of the French rights in the near future. There's no doubt about that. And then heading into what he can do and how we can put seats, uh, uh, you know, asses in the seats, essentially. Aside from fielding a winning team, I think, and I've talked about this before on radio, I think the biggest thing that the CFL lacks sometimes, maybe not in the prairies, in, in you know, Saskatchewan versus Winnipeg and that kind of thing, the Banjo Bowl. I think Montreal, Toronto, Montreal, Hamilton, Montreal, Ottawa, they need a sense of making it personal. They need a sense of rivalry. And I think you do this by allowing the players to have their personalities. Now, Danny Machocha is a very qualified GM. He's a, he's a steward of this franchise. And he's a guy who's not a man to, uh, you know, say unnecessary things in the media, right? So it may not be the personality of the team necessarily, but I think if you want from a marketing perspective, a marketing perspective to expand the appeal of the team and get people to the stadium and get them amped up and get them excited. In addition to the team winning games, you need personality and rivalries and you need to make it personal for the fans. They need to come to the stadium because they want to boo the Toronto Argonauts or they hate a guy, hate being in a sports sense, not in a dangerous sense. They hate a guy so much that they want to get there and boo him for 60 minutes. That is what you need in the CFL to make this thing go a little more. Of course, in hockey, you had fights and Quebec Nordiques and the Canadians and rivalries and things like that. But I think you have to find the personalities on the team that can be explosive in a good way and let them thrive. Let TVS Spore tell those stories. And it'll be interesting to see now because the scrutiny will be indeed on the, 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 you know, coverage of LDS for the next couple of years. And maybe that's something that the Pelado team will be doing is, is kind of criticizing the coverage 
ad nauseum to put some seeds into the head of the CFL when they go to renegotiate those rights. But as an example, the press conference with a, a French Canadian Quebecois owner was not covered live on any of the LDS channels. And I don't understand it. You're showing, uh, they have three channels. They have LDS, LDS de, and LDS Info, which is a news channel, a breaking news channel. And they're literally just showing stuff on a loop from 16 hours ago. I just, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. Meanwhile, TVS Sport doesn't even have the rights. Certainly, they're going to cover, of course, Monsieur Pelado. And they did. And they did a good job. They had a studio, uh, you know, set up. And they also had a reporter at uh, the press conference live on camera with the, you know, impending press conference about to happen behind the they hyped it up beginning at 11 a.m. on the day. Uh, LDS.ca, the, the internet site, had the press conference. Yes, agreed. And so I've talked about this on social media. I, I just think there's no other way to say it. It was petty and it was very deliberate, I think. It was a very obvious move from Bell Media executives. They did not want to give a spotlight to Mr. Pelado, who did in his press conference talk about how Videotron has kicked Bell's ass uh, in, in you know landlines back in the day. and. And certainly uh, they compete on a cell phone uh, sense as well. So he took the opportunity to raise the profile of his entities that make him money. And he did a good job at that. So I'm wondering, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the LDS covers this because you're going to see Videotron around the boards at, at McGill Stadium. I think he's going to go crazy push, pushing his his stuff, Tevia Spore, all that stuff on TV. And it's going to be interesting to see how LDS fights back or are they allowed to blur out the logo? It's going to be a, uh, an interesting situation happening moving forward here. So anyway, those are just some of my thoughts on the new Alouette's ownership situation. The team on the field, of course, really a, a product uh, to be determined. Uh, we don't know how they're going to be. Cody Fajardo coming in, had some injuries in Saskatchewan, forced out last year. Uh, I really like Davis Alexander, more on him. Coming in the next few weeks, I, I think he's got potential at quarterback. He's kind of buried behind Caleb Evans and, of course, uh, 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 Cody Fajardo, who's going to get a lot of the he headlines. But the, the running backs are solid. They lost Geno Lewis, which is just a horrible loss for them. It seems like uh, Alouettes uh, always have great receivers. So we'll find out if Winicky and Lewis departing will affect them. But if you think back to that uh, playoff game last year that they lost, it was really on the defense. The offense was fantastic. I still think that Trevor Harris leaving is not really that big a deal. The guy was a 500 career quarterback and he got $500,000 from Saskatchewan, which is just a desperation move, I think. So that's it for me uh, from RU Game for this episode. Uh, short but sweet. We will be back very soon, like I mentioned, with something on uh, profiling this year, this past year's um, NHL trade deadline. And of course, more on the CFL. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it's Matthew evolves at Matthew evolves and three down is where you can see some pieces for me moving forward. 